<laughs> so you can read after me. Yeah. I swear by the Almighty Allah. I swear by the Almighty Allah. That the evidence which I shall give to this commission. That the evidence which I shall give to this commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing. And nothing. But the truth. But the truth. So help me Allah. So help me Allah. You can wait for the instruction. Could you kindly state your names? Could you state your names, please? Ah, my name is uh, Usman Jame. <coughs> where do you live, <coughs> Mr. Jame? Where do you live? I live in Brikamba. What work do you do at the moment? Sorry? What work do you do at the moment? At the moment, I'm a retiree. You are a? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't get that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I said I'm a retiree at the moment. Uh, you're retired from I'm this retired from public this service? Public service, yes, ma'am. Would you like to sit down? Please, thank you. Sit down, please. You worked um, as Secretary General, Office of the President. You worked as Secretary General, Office of the President. That's right, ma. Which office did you retire from? I retired uh, from the public service uh, once I was appoint appointed a minister. So I decided to take early. At the time, I was not yet due for compulsory retirement. Sorry, I, so can't, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I can't barely hear what you're saying. <coughs> I said I retired from the public service uh, at the point when I was appointed as a state minister. State minister? Yeah. In which ministry? Which ministry? Oh, ministry of the first time I was appointed minister was uh, for the minister of petroleum, energy, and uh, mineral resources. Which ministry did you retire from? Uh, I don't know that's the question actually because I when said you were retiring, which office were you uh, holding? Uh, as uh, office of the president, yes. No, when you were retiring, yes. from which office? Which office were you holding at the point of retirement? I was then the minister of petroleum, energy, and mineral resources. Is that I recognize that that is a political appointment, so I retired from voluntary from the civil the civil service. You had retired voluntarily from the civil service? Yes. And then and you were retained, appointed? Yeah, no, at the time I was appointed minister, then that was the time when I retired from the civil service. All right. Yeah. Which years did you hold office as Secretary General? Uh, um, I held the office of uh, the Secretary General uh, on two occasions. The first time was uh, from September 2007 to May 2008, and again in uh, May 2011 to December 2011. Okay, um, what other offices have you held? Yeah, from October 1994 to September uh, 2007, I was appointed permanent secretary, um, but in, I, and I serve in uh, five different uh, ministries and uh, also permanent secretary at the office of the president. During which period were you permanent secretary, office of the president? That was uh, in 2007, prior to my appointment as uh, secretary general. Only 2007? Yes, it was a short Which period. month in 2007? Uh, I, cannot, I cannot remember the moment. As, because I served in different, different places, I cannot. But I know it's in 2007. Do you recollect how many months you served before you became 
Secretary General in 2007? Um, I think it's about uh, close, to, clo close to one year. Well, it was a dual position. When I moved in there, I was at the Commission of Petroleum at the same time, the Permanent Secretary. Mm. And then later on, um, appointed as uh, Permanent Secretary 1 at the Office of the President. From May 2008 to um, June 2010, I, I served as minister in three different portfolios. And the first one was, as I said, uh, the Minister of uh, Petroleum, Energy, and Mineral, Mineral Resources. And then when uh, Petroleum and uh, Energy was uh, separated, was I, Sorry, I when petroleum and energy were separated. Separate okay. ministries, yes. I became the, the Minister of Energy, and also I served as the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So between December 2011 until what period did you serve as the Minister of Petroleum and Energy? I, I, I cannot, you I cannot remember. remember the dates, actually. But, yes. but you're saying that between um, May 2008 until 2010, mm -hmm. you served as Minister of Petroleum and Energy, and then when they were separated, you yes. served as what? As Minister of Energy. Minister of Energy. And then from there, I went to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Then Foreign Affairs. Yeah. And then you came back to the position of Secretary General in May 2010. Yes. yes From 2011, what, what happened? That's when, when you retired, 2011, uh, in from December, the civil service. Hmm? Of course, yes. In, <clears throat> in December 2011, I had a problem with the government, and uh, um, I was... Uh, I, I believe to, I believe I was really uh, wrongly uh, charged for a crime which I didn't, uh, you know, um, commit, and I was uh, I was jailed for three years, but I didn't serve my full jail term. I served only nine months in jail, and then uh, eventually I was able to get a presidential pardon, and thereafter, few few weeks after my presidential pardon, I was offered, I was actually appointed because I received the letter of appointment as to serve as the Gambia's ambassador to South Africa. But due to circumstances, I decided to decline the offer. So um, let me understand, your last position in government was in December 2011? Yes. And at that time, you were Secretary General? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. um, of, of course, as Secretary General, various matters that are the subject matter of this um, investigation happened during your tenure. Um, I would like us to, <coughs> sorry, I'd like you to assist the Commission on Firstly, the issue of um, the Kanaji in the mining sector, Kanaji termination of the Kanaji license and the, the issuing of a license to Gamiko. Yes. Uh, you were the Secretary General when Kanaji's I was Kanaji the was yes, license I was, was the revoked. I was the Secretary General when that uh, license was terminated. Now, what but, was the basis for determination of, I know the records are showing <coughs> that um, they were accused of certain things. Mm -hmm. Now, what we can't find is the, what um, initiated or instigated the whole termination of the whole license. What happened whilst you were there mm. that led to Yeah, my, honest, 
my recollection of what really happened was that uh, <clears throat> the president was of the view that uh, the Kanaji minerals uh, were not uh, paying enough in terms of uh, the government revenues from the mining operations. And uh, one of uh, his uh, concern was that uh, these minerals that are um, mined in the Gambia were exported without actually doing uh, further processing, which will add value to the to the to the product. So, um, but yeah. then on investigations. Uh, okay, um, we we really, you know, this matter went to arbitration. And what happened when they were terminated and so on is a, is a moot point at, at the moment, when they were terminated, in terms of whether it was right or it was wrong. But what led to the government, or what um, was the basis for the president forming the opinion that Kanaji was not um, doing the right thing? He, he, we know he was not a geologist at least from the records. Yes, I, I, we, we know also that your ministry or your, your office did not have any geologists. You relied entirely on the geology uh -huh, department. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The records also show that, showed that the director of geology actually advised against it. Now, what we would like to have is an insight. What uh -huh. led to the decision or the, the not the decision, but the um, opinion that was held by your office at the time that Kanaji was not doing the right thing? Yeah, we, we tried frantically to <clears throat> change the narrative, but unfortunately, I mean, I think uh, uh, you, can, you can attempt, but you cannot uh, always succeed in trying to change the mindset of the president. Was he influenced by anyone? Yes, certainly later on he was influenced by some but other Was people. he influenced by anyone in deciding but, 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 that Kanaji was not doing the right thing? Yes, but before I come to the issue of um, what I know about the group that influenced him, Yes. Um, eventually, I mean, when he said that, you know, I mean, um, and that's something that I agreed with him. If, if, you, if you export raw minerals, you don't get value for money. Um, but then when the concern was raised, and of course the decision was taken to terminate the contract, I took up the responsibility of contacting the, the chief executive of the Carnegie Minerals and expressed to him, although he was not formally communicated to what I expressed to him at a meeting that uh, these were the concerns of the president. And I think they were genuine concerns uh, we believe that you know the Gambia can earn more if you do secondary processing in country before you export the minerals. And uh, what his response was that uh, yes, they are aware of that, but he felt that the Gambia, the government was uh, um, in need of receiving payments. That's why you know they were actually doing that. But they they were actually in the process of really putting in place the structures needed for this processing uh, fa uh, facility in the Gambia. So, and uh, I think uh, it was not just uh, something that he was concocting because I, he showed me ev evidence uh, which did back to many months ago showing that, you know, the efforts that they were doing to make sure that that particular processing <coughs> plant is in the Gambia. I've okay. seen invoices and I've seen certain materials that were already brought into the country. So when I took up this matter with the president, I said, well, he told me, well, if they are ready to do that, then they can come back. At the time, they had already been terminated. So um, I had the opportunity to uh, meet with the chief executive in London. But um, during the appointment, you know, I asked the then justice minister to accompany me to have this meeting with uh, Alan, Alan, that's the chief executive of Carnegie. We had okay. a good meeting, and I assured him that, you know, I mean, once you are able to do this, the president uh, has given us the mandate to meet with you and uh, to convince you to come back. And he was very happy. Once we came back, he sent uh, the manager that was sent away from here, he was sent the manager back to resume operations in the Gambia. Then, um, while, you know, they resumed their operations, something else happened. 
another group came. Um, I think, you know, they were introduced to the president by Mr. Bassi, and they claimed to be Australians, and I was in the pre meeting where they were making presentations to the president. And they were telling him that, you know, they are Australians, which I doubted very much, maybe, I mean, they look like Lebanese to me. <clears throat> but they said, you know, they are apologizing on behalf of their countrymen who were exploiting the Gambia. If they are given the opportunity, they can do far better than what Kanagi was doing. You know, so at that point, you know, I mean, in fact, they were telling the president things that are not actually true. That what these Kanagi mineral, uh, minerals were exporting, you know, is uranium, uh, and the quantity that uh, they were exporting, if, if you calculate it in money terms, is running into billions, I mean, without any basis, you know. But, you know, when the president is meeting with people, you, you are secretary general, you, you cannot just inter interject, like, in, interject like that, you know. Unless, I mean, but what he did was uh, he turned to me and said, secretary general, the deal is off. I felt like cold water poured on me because I took the, the effort you know, to, 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 to mediate and make sure that these people came back. Because I believe that, you know, I mean, um, they were actually doing genuine business in the Gambia. Okay. Because this mining license, remember, was even signed by him himself. So, I mean, I believe that, you know, this is not a good sign for, you know, other uh, investors if you are treating people, I mean, investors so, in that so, manner. Okay, Mr. Mr. Jame. Mm -hmm. no, my, my question was, which was quite a direct question, um, mm -hmm. this in, the information you are giving us certainly gives us an insight into what happened. Mm -hmm. um, this group, there is something on record on them, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I assume, which you will help us to discover in the records, many records that you have at the, at the office of the president. Is there anything on them, any record on the group? You said they were introduced by Mr. Bazi. Yeah, yeah, they were introduced to the president. I mean, I don't know much about the group. I, I was just calling to a meeting where they were uh, with the president, and then they was were the Mr. Bazi present in that meeting. Um, that I cannot recollect actually. How do you know they were introduced by Mr. Bazi? No, I, I think in the communications. I mean, later on I realized that this is. If, I, if my memory was tells me right, I think Mr. Basi himself was there. But if not, I mean, I, I know that, you know, it was a group that was brought to the office okay. of the president by Mr. Basi. In your opinion, when the president revoked the license, was he influenced by anyone? Was he influenced when he revoked oh. the license of Kanaji? You know, it was revoked uh, a second time. But the second time, it was based on the influence that this other new group, okay. you know, brought to his attention that uh, they can do a better job. But we don't have any record, in fact, of an Australian group taking over. We, what we have is a record of one Gamiko. Do you know Gamiko? Uh, Were I, you there I, when Gamiko took over? Well, I think, I think, you know, eventually when these things happened, I left the office, so I, I, I didn't follow up uh, what was happening there, because then I left her to become a minister. So, okay. I mean, um, but I know it is the same group, actually. It's the same group, Gabiko. Sorry, you know? It's the same group that the made the presentation group. to the president, yes. Was there any ministry or other senior officer involved during this process? You recollect since you left? Yeah, I think in the meeting, the, the then foreign minister was present. Um, Who was the foreign Chris, minister? Uh, Crispin Gray Johnson. Sorry? The, Crispin Gray, Gray Johnson. Who Crispin, was then Crispin the, Gray Johnson. Yeah, he was then the foreign minister. Who else? Was there anybody else? No. Basically, that's, uh, that's a, what the you one recollect. I can recall, actually, yeah. All right, thank you very yeah. much. Um, we'll move on to social security matters. When you were, 
Does the commission want to ask any questions on this? Oh, no? Okay, thank you. Um, could you show the witness exhibit SC17, please? Um, Mr. Jami, you took over as Secretary General from Dr. Njuguba, is that correct? No, I took over from Ibrahim Akamara. Ibrahim Akamara, uh, all right. In May. Ibrahim, mm. Ibrahim Okamara. Ibrahim Okamara, yeah. <clears throat> As you can see from that exhibit, that there is a letter of 17 March 2011, whereby the Secretary General at the time Dr. Njugu Elba wrote mm -hmm. to the Social Security asking for a loan facility of 1 million, mm -hmm. 500,000 cash and 500,000 bankers check in the name of government of Japan. Mm -hmm. Now subsequently, um, the 500,000 evidence shows here, before the uh, evidence adduced before this commission shows that the 500,000 was Re, either return or reverse, and whichever. It was returned, I think. Okay. At least the money was never sent to Japan. The transaction was reversed. Mm -hmm. Now, the 500,000, again, the evidence shows that on the 6th of May, 2011, a letter emanated from the office of the president indicating that um, the 500,000 earmarked for donation to the government of Japan mm -hmm. in the aftermath of the recent tsunami to the Trust Bank Limited current, should be paid to the Trust Bank Limited current account 120, 120.99101 immediately. Okay. That account is an account in the name of the Gambia Animal Feed and Rice Project. I'll show you a document yeah. which was signed by you on the 6th October 2011 mm -hmm. with regard to that project. Can you look at that document and tell us what you know about it? Can you, can you show him this letter? Because the version in that pack is not clear. Um, I'll show you the Office of the President file, PRC 473, Volume 1. And um, folio, I direct you to Folio 1 and 2, which were copied and given to you. Can you give him this file? might be of help to you. Sorry, Council. Uh, what is the number of that exhibit? It's not been exhibited yet. When he identifies it, uh, I'll Not yet, it. okay. Yeah. It's the last two folios on those files. I just copied it for you. Oh, okay. But you can look at the file. Um, Mr. Mr. Jami, yes. why was, um, what is that project in the first place? Uh, I, I know the, the genesis of that project. Uh, it was as a result of uh, an official visit that the president uh, paid to the Republic of Amin to Qatar that he was able to meet his some invest investors who presented Please to speak them. Speak up a little bit, maybe volume a little bit. Yeah. So I was saying it was as a result of uh, the visit uh, that uh, the president uh, made to the 
I mean, in, uh, Qatar, that he met this uh, group. The Kingdom of Qatar. Qatar, the Kingdom of Qatar. And uh, he was introduced to this group who had a proposal to implement a rice mill uh, in the Gambia. And uh, this was to add value to the rice that is produced in the Gambia. And it's also going to be, um, as the proposal goes, and a marketing outlet for Gambian rice growers. And they will process this rice into products that will add value to the rice and, of course, help the Gambian economy. The presentation was quite uh, attractive. If you are somebody who is, uh, you know, biased in agriculture, who, who wants to make sure that they... they who is biased? Sorry? I said, if one is biased like myself, because that's my background, okay. agriculture, that, I mean, if you want to promote that, uh, you also have to really deal with, uh, you know, processing of agro, uh, agricultural products, especially uh, the products that we import en masse. And if you have uh, uh, an investor that can also create a market for the Gambian rice growers, I think that is something that uh, one can buy into. Sorry. So in, on the basis of that, you know, the president invited them to come because, I mean, this is, this is a very interesting proposal. They can come in to, to, to invest in the Gambia. And, then, and of course, they feel they are for fulfilled their uh, obligations. They came in. And uh, what surprised me was that, you know, they didn't want to <coughs> go it alone. They, want to have, uh, they wanted to have partners, you know, and uh, based on uh, the discussions with the president, of course, he gave uh, indications that uh, the, some of the public enterprises that had uh, participated in in the project should also t uh, also I mean re invest in this particular venture. Um, Mr. Jamil, that may be so. What I do not understand is why the government would be paying five hundred thousand directly to an account open for this project and it, it was a commercial bank account. Oh. I know when it, um, when it was being paid, it looks like Ibrahim O. Kamara <coughs> was the Secretary General, that's oh. 6 May 2011. Oh. You said you came back, um, when did you come back? In May 2011, you were not Secretary General. You came back in September, you said. Okay. Your letter of 6 October 2011 says mm. I write in respect of the above account opened mm. on May 8, 2011 with the sum of 500000 mm -hmm. at your bank. And that at the time the account was called the Gambia Animal Feed and Rice Project. Mm. And to request you to amend your records as follows. Account name Gambia Food and Feed Industries and F Stroke Feed, GFFI. Signatory Saud Gandor, Canadian. Passport number is given. Oh. Richard Gandor, Canadian. Passport number is given. Alaji OCC, Gambian. Passport number is given. Oh. The above names replace Ibrahim O. Kamara, former Secretary General oh. and Head of the Civil Service, and Abdullah Tibik Jara. Oh. Oh. So why was the Office of the President actually involved in opening accounts and putting the sum of 500,000 of National Provident Fund funds into this account. Yeah, at the, at the time I I wrote this letter, the <coughs> I think the account was already open, and it was only based on directives that you know. At the time, Ibrahim Asise, when I wrote this letter, he was no longer the, <coughs> the Secretary General. Hello, sorry, technician, can you help us? I said, I'm very clear from this end. Okay. So at the the, the uh, okay. How you can sorry. sorry about that. Uh, what prompted the writing of this letter <coughs> was that you know the 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 Ibrahim O Kamara was no longer the Secretary General. 
and he was out of the jury. So I think he was then on another assignment in Brussels. <clears throat> but uh, to to go to the point, it was uh, actually based on the directives of the president that these are the gentlemen who should really sign on. on, on should be a signatories to this account, and there are the two um, Canadian, the two Canadians, and uh, the chief of protocol at the time, that is Alaji OCC. Well, the file does not contain <laughs> any written directive. So, how how did he direct well, you? No, no, direct is. Uh, at the office of the president, uh, either written uh, or verbal, he will call you and uh, okay. we'll speak to you. Let me, let me get those documents and apply okay. to have them admitted, and then we'll, we'll continue. Yes. On, on um, what I would like you to, you still oh. have not really been clear why the office of the president, why was the office of the president actually the one that opened a private account with private people and put $500,000 in it, whatever the nature of the project. And then you took over, and I know you didn't open it. The record show it was Ibrahim Okamara's time. You took over and changed the signatories. But we would like to understand the thinking that would influence. What was the purpose? What was government going to, um, I, don't, I think you understand what I'm saying. Why? Yeah. On, high, on hindsight, I think uh, it was inappropriate, but you know, under the circumstances when, uh, we're, you, in which uh, we were operating, I mean, if it is a project that is, uh, you know, um, shall I say, being pushed by the president himself, uh, he actually directs you what to do, you know. And uh, I mean, I had questioned that myself, of course. Uh, oh, why should why should we in fact participate in the project? You know, but the the argument that these people gave was that you know their monies are coming and they they, they just wanted to be part of this country and then they want also um, certain entities, Gambian entities, to be working with them. So that was the justification. But, uh, uh, all right. but Mr. it is Mr. not. It is Mr. in my own personal view, it's not appropriate actually. I would have preferred them to go solo, but the argument was that they, they needed to work with partners. And this money was raised from one of the, I think, the partners. And, uh, you know, when, when, when um, they were actually asked to be introduced to be the signatories to this account, I was uh, rather uncomfortable. But uh, as I said, uh, sometimes it's based on these directives that you uh, you cannot always okay. change. All right. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I apply to have admitted um, two letters, mm -hmm. a letter dated 6 May 2011, which um, forms part of Exhibit SC17, but the, the version in Exhibit SC17 is very dark. It's almost illegible. But, and um, another letter dated 6 October 2011, signed by the witness, changing the signatories to an account held at Trust Bank Gambia Limited in respect of the $500,000 taken from the National Provident Fund account.
Uh, if I may, if I may add on. Okay, sorry. Letter dated six May two thousand and eleven from the office of the president to the managing director sshfc re trust bank dollar account opening gambia animal feed and rice project and letter dated 6 october 2011 from office of the president to md trust bank re-change of account name and signatories to account number 12012099101 with the name Gambia Animal Feed and Rice Project admitted mark in a bundle SC31. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Jami, you wanted to say something? No, I, I just wanted to add on the Kanaji issue. Uh, when I came back as Secretary General a second time. Sorry? Uh, say that again. I said when I came back to the Office of the President as sec uh, Secretary General the last time, that is in 2011, I found out that, of course, the Kanaji had actually sued the Gambia government. You found out that? The Kanaji had sued the Gambia government. Mm -hmm. And the Gambia government lawyers came up with a right of and requested that you know I be a party to the to be uh, a witness to uh, the uh, arbitration that is supposed to take place in London. And the statement was written, which is which was actually refuting the fact that I had the discussions with the Carnegie Minerals in London, and uh, claimed that uh, that did not happen. So I mean, when I saw this, I, I spoke to the Solicitor General at the time was Pahadi Jami. I told him that my conscience cannot allow me to be a witness and even deny something that has actually happened. So I, I'm afraid whatever can happen, I will not be willing to be a witness on the side of the government, government to, to defend the government on this Kanaji issue because what the, letter, what the statement is saying is complete opposite of what actually happened. Because I did have a meeting with them to convince them to come back, and then subsequently uh, the whole issue was derailed. And in the meeting that I had with uh, Alan Hawkins, you know, I took along a witness, and the witness is. Please speak into the mic. We cannot hear you clearly. Uh, okay, sorry. Speak into the mic. Oh, speak into. I said, at the time the witness was the sitting Minister of Justice and uh, she witnessed the meeting, so I could not really append my signature or my name to a statement which is false. So Who was I the Minister of Justice? Marcin, Marcin, the Dows. Who was the minister at the time you were being asked to give that evidence? Uh, I said the, the uh, Marcin, the Dows. Was in the meeting in London? Is in London, right? yes. Was she still minister when you were being asked no, no, to No, 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 he, he, he had Who? actually left at the time. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. We, well, thank you for that. Mm. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this evidence, but since you went back to Kanaji, mm. Mr. Bazi said here mm. that he was contacted by the government to assist after the termination of the Kanaji mineral license. Did you contact Mr. Your office contact Mr. Bazi, Bazi to come and assist after the. As I said, you know, I mean, the truth is, um, it is Mr. Bazi. Did you con answer the question first? Did so, you contact? Okay. No, no, I did not. Did your office contact him to come and assist? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yes, you were going to explain. I was going to explain that, you know, I mean, it's clear to me that uh, the, the group was actually introduced to the president by Mr. Bassi. 
So he cannot say that, uh, well, maybe the president asked him directly, but I'm not aware of that, and uh, it, it was mm. not done administratively. All right. Okay, so, thank you. Um, I just, we will, of course, the commission will be investigating this Gambia food and feed industries because not only did the office of the president invest $500,000, but quite a number of um, public enterprises were directed to invest uh -huh. in this company. Uh -huh. um, we'll come back to this, but, um, and we will invite you back once okay. we have okay. the investigations uh -huh. um, in this matter uh, proceeded with. Um, after, what I would like you to answer is this. You were talking about Qatar. But the files indicate that um, the investors had Canadian passport numbers. And then um, they actually had a company called Conapro, Dena, BMS, Sal, Offshore, Beirut, Lebanon. What can you tell us about this? Yes, I mean, at the time we were, we were uh, in Qatar, I mean, uh, the impression we got was these are Qataris. We are these very people, these um, yes, they are the ones bearing who, these Canadian yes. passport numbers. Were they in Qatar with you? Did you meet them in Qatar? Yes, South we, Gandor, Richard Gandor? Yes, we, we met them in Qatar. But at the time, we were given the impression that they were Qataris also, Qatari investors. It was later on we discovered that they are actually Lebanese and also with Canadian passports, so you know. They were Lebanese with Canadian passports? Yes. How were they introduced to Gambia government? How they were? How were they introduced? Who introduced them? Oh, the ambassador, the ambassador at the time in Qatar, you know. The Gambian ambassador? The Gambian ambassador. What was Asma, his name? Asman, Asman Ajame. Okay. Asman Ajame. He was the ambassador at the time. All right. As I said, we'll come back to this again. Mr. Okay. Chairman, mm. do you have any questions? Commissioner, before I move on to something else. Um, ag again, with regard to social security, there is exhibit SC18, which is a cash loan you requested from the Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation. You were the Secretary General and, and, and signed the letter. Uh -huh. Could you kindly give the witness exhibit SC18? It's dated 3rd August 2011, and you said the office is urgently in need of a cash loan of 6,432,700 to address a very critical issue, and we would be grateful if you could assist. We want to assure you that this amount will be refunded before the end of this month. The above amount can be delivered to Mr. Amadou Samba of Gassem. Thank you for your understanding. And attach, you attach an invoice. <coughs> yeah. A statement of account, um, which, is, which indicates that it's a 50% advance payment to contract for a water tank, and an invoice from Braithwaite Engineers Limited, addressed to Kanilai Family Farms. The evidence in this, before this commission is that um, this money was intended to purchase a tank it would appear for Canning Life Farms. Mr. Jame, as Secretary General, we need, the Commission would like you to explain why you would issue such a letter giving your experience in the civil service. Yeah. Uh, you, you will notice that you know, the, let, the letter was not even written on a... Sorry, please speak. <laughs> Sorry, I have just a low voice. Just raise your voice, yes, uh -huh. thank you. Uh, these are the uh, examples of the challenges of the office of the president when uh, the head of state himself calls you directly and gives you directives to, to, to implement. And uh, it is, under those circumstances, very, very difficult to, 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 to refuse to honor his uh, instructions. I mean, it could face consequences, consequences for that. But um, you know in your own 
good self that you know I mean it's not appropriate sorry I didn't get that you know you know in you know yourself that you know such actions are not appropriate but they are directives so you cannot just tell the president no I cannot do it but the issue here is that you what, know what was the urgency you said the office is urgently in need of a cash loan. Yeah. It was in the office that needed the cash loan. Yeah, this, 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 this as I said, you know, the, the instructions from the head of state himself. That he told you that to say yes, this? Yes, of course, yes. I, are you I, I saying, had to reflect, are you saying had to reflect he, that Are you saying letter. he told you to say this, that it, yes, the yes, office Yes, and that it, the, the money will be paid at the end, by the end of, before the end of the month. So I thought it was just a, a loan which will be honored, but... Um, you know, once you write the letter, of course, you get busy in other issues that you, 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 the only thing I got was that, the, you know, the response from the Social Security to say that they have honored the request from the Office of the President, and uh, they showed me evidence that they have drawn up a check in the name of Ahmadu Samba. So I presume that, you know, the letter and spirit of this letter was going to be adhered to, that before the end of the month, they will refund the money to Social Security. So, but thereafter, I have no knowledge of what transpired uh, after writing this letter. Mr. Jeremy, are you hinting that right from the outset you knew this thing was personal? It wasn't official. Is that what you are trying to confirm? That the request was actually not an official request on behalf of the government? No, it, 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 it was not there. That's what I was saying. It's, Thank it you. was not in order, actually. Okay, that's clear. Yeah. Is that why it's not on government letterhead? Yes, because I believe that so it, it was be deliberate. It was deliberately done on It was deliberately plain done, paper. yeah, because I believe that, you know. Yeah. To demonstrate um, your belief that it was personal and not official. Yes, the Constitution indicates that I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but I, I know that we are supposed to honor our national flag and also national symbols. I mean, the, let, the letterhead also bears the coat of arms of the Gambia government. And I mean, on, based on that, you know, I, I believe it, it should not be used anyhow. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Jeremy, uh, by, this, by this time, several loans had been taken from Social Security. Uh, that is by 2011. Uh -huh. um, the commission is basically, um, as a council assisting the commission, um, struggling to understand the mindset that led the ex-president to believe that he could just take money from Social Security, knowing fully well that these uh, monies intended for the pension of Gambian workers. And... Um, Really, and we are talking about the bulk of the workers in the country. Can you assist us? What was the mindset in that office that led the president to believe that he could do this? Well, if uh, the president is working with very close associates who have actually had some association with Social Security, I, I would imagine that they would have been briefing him or advising him as to the potential sources of financing for the projects that they are implementing together. And I re recall, of course, the, the, the recipient of this check, Adam uh, Amadou Samba, was at one point, you know, the chairman of the board of directors of uh, Social Security. So I, I believe that he, he must, uh, he, he, he should have known the implications of this. But I believe perhaps the mindset of the president must have been influenced by uh, people who know what is there in social security, that we can get this loan from, we can get this money from social security. That's my personal. Did view. you at any time remonstrate with him, or if you cannot, which um, from what you described might be a difficult one, but did you draw to his attention the not only irregularity, but the illegality of? the government just giving directions or instructions to Social Security to spend pension funds? Uh, I, I did that several times, but uh, uh, knowing the type of person he is, I mean, uh, he, will tell you, he will tell you off. You advise him and say, I'm not interested in what you think. 
And at one point, you know, when you argue with him, he asks you, and he has done that to me, am I the president or are you the president? So, I mean, when, when you come to that level, you, you, you've got to where you have to stop. You advise him, he says, are you the president or am I the president? I mean, okay. the president tells you that. It means you've got to your limit. Okay, there is one more transaction concerning NAWEC that also happened during your time. The first mm -hmm. NAWEC loan mm -hmm. of $7,931,000. Do you remember that loan? Yes, I did. Now, this was in 2012. By then, the office of the president had graduated from small amounts to huge amounts. But anyway, this one was intended for NAWEC, it seems. Mm. What was the... Well, tell us about, about this loan, because you say this is um, Exhibit SC24, a letter dated August 25, 2011. We command your management. We commend, sorry, we commend your management and express our appreciation for providing a loan facility to NAWEC amounting to $7,931,000 or in order to service its debt in full with ITFC. Your assistance to NAWEC is viewed as as the right spirit of cooperation for a mutual pursuit towards national development. Now, it doesn't look like the loan was, um, um, yes, the loan was, that the loan was actually yeah, made during your period time as Secretary General. What can you tell the Commission about, about this amount? A huge sum of money taken from Social Security to pay for NAWEC needs? Yeah, at least this is one of the, the cases where I believe, you know, the, it was not absolutely wrong for another public enterprise, if they have the means, to also assist another uh, sister uh, public enterprise, especially one that is key in, in the economic development of this country, that is NAWEC. So, but the issue here, here is that it was not like uh, something that is going to be given to them for free. Um, I could recall my letter also indicated that, you know, modal modalities should be worked out between the two parties, that is Social Security and the NAWEC, and also with uh, finance on the modalities of paying about this money back to Social Security, you know, so. Well, it doesn't look like your office took the responsibility of actually ensuring that there was a payment plan at that time and that this money was actually put back. Yeah, I, I think, I'm, I'm not sure, but I believe that the letter was also copied to the Minister of Finance. I don't have a copy of that letter here, I can see it. But I would have, this particular letter that you signed is not copied. Ah, okay. Maybe I was thinking of another one. Okay. I think, uh, yes, what I could recall was uh, the similar letter to them um, relating to NAWEC also, uh, which, which where I clearly, I, 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 cannot, I cannot see that one here, indicated that, you know, the repayment uh, plan should be worked out between the parties with the support of, with the assistance of the Minister of Finance. Um, Mr. Well, Jame, I'm sure you have heard by now uh -huh. that uh, from that loan, directives were given for NAWEC to be lent money from the National Provident Fund to the tone of, up to the tone of $23 million. Uh -huh. 
So there is a major hole in the National Provident Fund, mm -hmm. which cannot be filled or has not been filled, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there is no indication as of now. This commission is looking at you know, some of these processes and procedures and lapses or whatever irregularities mm -hmm. that led to the bankruptcy of a key organization yeah, in, in the country. Um, and I ask you as Secretary General, whether at that, as at that time, as you said, you said your view is that there is nothing wrong. But there is a process, there is a mechanism, there is a right way of doing it. Mm -hmm. but why wasn't such a mechanism put in place to make sure that uh, proper process was followed? And that, in fact, NAWEC had the ability to give back them funds to Social Security. Mm. I think it's also the responsibility of uh, the management of Social Security if they are not in a position to uh, honor certain requests for them to clearly come out and state that you know they don't have the funds. But they, if they give the impression that the funds are there, and it's also for uh, the request that is sent to them is for the same national development. Well, um, if they give the impression that the funds is there, I, I'm afraid, you know, uh, that, that kind of uh, request will continue to be received by them. But I expect that, you know, I mean, if I were a manager of Social Security, I, I know that, you know, um, this is going to really, any request that is going to seriously affect, you know, the core operations of my organization, I'll, I'll have to really bring it to the attention of the Office of the President. You can, you, you can write to the Secretary General and explain. And then the Secretary General will have the basis to address the matter to the President for him to also to understand. But if you give the impression that you have the money there, well, the request will still come. Especially if it is to really um, be spent in a sector which is quite key to our national development. Sorry, we shall rise for 15 minutes. Thank you.